Hi, everyone, and welcome to this short demonstration video about chat GPT. So I was recently requested by um, the Australia Today to do a short video about chat GPT, which is a conversational chat bot developed by OpenAI, as you will see on the screen. I've got the OpenAI website open. So uh, look, the world of technology, I think, is abuzz with chat GPT, uh, because what it does is it uses um, artificial intelligence to generate responses to, to user questions. The platform was made available uh, for beta testing uh, on the 1st of December. And as of today, there's over a million users who have signed uh, in to, to try the tool. Uh, there have been speculations that uh, Google might, uh, or chat GPT might replace Google search engine, but I doubt that will happen in the near future, particularly because um, Google is a search engine, whereas chat GPT um, is a chat bot. And uh, there's also speculation, you know, we're talking about uh, chat GPT replacing humans. Well, I see that chat GPT has its role to play in different domains, whether uh, that be um, uh, for uh, customer service or whether that be for programmers, but I doubt, you know, it's, it can be seen as a, a total replacement for humans. Chat GPT currently is a free service. That is because it's under uh, beta testing, but as uh, things progress, um, I'm sure OpenAI, the company behind Chat GPT, will start to, to monetize it. So um, as you'll see on the screen, uh, I've got uh, OpenAI's website open. And at the top here, um, we've got uh, the chat GPT research release. So this is only beta version for trying it at the moment. And that's why they're calling it as a research release. So when you are on the OpenAI, OpenAI website, if you click on try, it'll ask you if you're logging on for the first time, it'll ask you to create a, a username, um, account, username, password, and to register, which I have already done. Uh, so the interface is quite intuitive. It's easy to use, and I think that's what makes it appealing as well, and that's why so many people are, are, are rushing to try and, and use it. And in this interface, uh, users can very quickly feed in their query in this chat box that you see down in the bottom here. I've already made a, a list of questions that I will uh, quickly type in so you can see how the chatbot responds to them. Um, so I'm going to start typing a few questions. And as you will notice, you know, our chatbot uh, can answer follow up questions. Um, uh, and if uh, we make inappropriate requests, it can also reject them. And often, if uh, we provide incorrect information, it can also challenge that information. But I think there's a lot of trial, and I really encourage you to try and use it. And so you will see uh, both the pros and cons of this tool. Well, it definitely holds a lot of promise. But uh, let's kick off and feed it with some questions to, to see what sort of responses we are getting. So the first question I've fed into the system is, what's the difference between knowledge sharing and knowledge hoarding? And as I'm speaking the question, you'll already see the response is on the screen. If I'm not happy with the response, I could go try again. And when I hit try again, what the chatbot does, it rewords or rephrases the response, adds more information uh, because it understands that I wasn't happy with the previous response. And if I'm happy with the response, and particularly given that this is a, a, a beta version, trial version, I could, you know, I could provide additional feedback. So I might say this is a good response. If I'm happy with the response, alternatively, if I'm not happy, uh, um, I could uh, provide that feedback as well. And feedback is important because that's how um, the learning uh, of the model takes place in the back end. So next, I'm going to ask you to write a LinkedIn post about ChatGPT. So this is interesting. You know, it'll, it'll frame, uh, sorry, 
before I do that, I'm just going to reset the thread. So I'll come back to the, the home page. So reset thread and hit the question now. Write a LinkedIn post about chat GPT. Uh, chat GPT uh, tends to get a bit temperamental. And I think that's because it's in the testing phases. It kind of slowed down at times. And given that I've been testing it for quite some time today, um, it, it's, it sometimes slows down in its responses to me. But as you'll see here, it's already given me a LinkedIn post that could I could use um, to promote chat GPT. Now it also does mathematical calculations. So let's try and give it a calculation. I'm not sure of the response to be honest, but let's see what chat GPT does. So I've given it a calculation. I've asked it to, to perform some calculation. We'll see what its response. It is taking time, like I said. Um, usually it doesn't, but there we go. As you'll see on the screen, the response is already coming up, tells you the steps that are required. Uh, it's In this instance, it's only told me the steps, so I'm going to hit try again because I'm looking for a response to that question. So um, temperamental, a bit slow. It wasn't so slow when I started initial testing, but I think the servers would obviously be busy. Um, so it's given me a response there. I'm going to hit try again because I want the steps also to appear and not just a, a number. So I want to learn how to calculate. Alternatively, I could go back, I could reset the thread and rephrase my question. So rather than say calculate, I'll say how to calculate. So uh, then we'll see what happens. So uh, you'll see on the screen, again, it's thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, that's probably because server is busy. That's all I can say. As you'll see here, we've got the three dots moving. We've got the blinker. So you see here, too many requests. Please slow down. It's asking me to slow down. So what I'm quickly going to do, I'm just going to log out and I'll log back in um, just so um, that uh, it allows me to work at a faster pace. And obviously it doesn't have anything to do with my logins, but uh, I've noticed that it kind of refreshes and allows me or provides responses uh, more speedily. So let's hit that question again, calculate. And it obviously uh, is a bit slow. And I think I'm only attributing that that to a lot of users currently using the the service. So let's wait for a response. And um, I mean, it is definitely an exciting development. Okay, interestingly, it says, sorry, I'm not able to perform calculations. Uh, although previously it was providing calculations because I've done this exact question. And I'll say try again. Uh, unless they've changed the algorithms in the back end, uh, because you know, it's been a few hours since I tried it, but I doubt that would be the case. So let's wait for a response, see what happens. If it doesn't, we'll, keep, we'll get on to the next question. So it's given me a, a response there, but I don't think that's right. Uh, well, it has applied the PENDA uh, way of calculation. So let me go try once more and we'll see what it does because previously it was telling me all the steps involved and was coming up with an answer as well but look it is an artificial intelligence um, powered uh, platform and um, uh, it's bound, bound to make mistakes so we've got some calculation there and i'll leave it for the mathematicians to 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 comment on whether the calculation was right um, Let's try something else. Uh, I'll, I'm going to ask it now to explain Darwin's theory of evolution. So again, I've got to the chatbot and I've hit explain Darwin's theory of evolution. It's thinking again, usually it doesn't take that long, but 
it is taking slightly longer than expected, but there we go. There's Darwin's theory of evolution, and I can go and upvote it or downvote it and provide feedback. If I'm not happy with the response, I could go try again. And it's going to, when I hit try again, it usually rephrases, provides more information because it's assuming that the user wasn't happy with the previous set of response. Now, while it's doing that, uh, I'm trying to think of another question to ask. And now I'm going to ask it. So there we go. It provides. And I've looked at the responses previously. The responses are really spot on. So now I'm going to ask it to give me a Python program. So for the programmers out there, you know, Python, Java, you could ask it to do simple or to do simple coding. So I'm asking it to write a Python program to convert kilometers to miles. And I've just hit enter. Now you see the speed with which it responds. Uh, I'm waiting for it to respond, and as it does that, you know, uh, uh, to be uh, to be honest with you, I am really awestruck with with this platform. So there you go. Um, it's given me the code, and all I have to do now is to copy the code. It also explains how it, the process uh, was carried out, and as you can see on the screen, the code is is already is already there. Um, so let's try another question, and now I'm going to ask it to write a blog post about secularism in India. So I'm going to reset the thread again and hit write a blog post about secularism in India. So you see how useful this tool is going to be for content writers also. Although you know uh, there are issues around around ethics, around integrity, uh, around critical thinking and analysis. However, you know, uh, this is again a tool and we need to really look at that information, see if it's right, and then decide how we're going to use that information. So you, there you go. It's given me a blog post and if I, it looks about 500 words to me about secularism in India. I'm not happy with it. I can obviously hit try again. I can provide feedback on it and so so forth. So let's try another question that focuses on the outcome of the recent elections in Victoria, in Victoria, Australia. I'll just type Australia there and see what it does. Because from what I understand and have been testing it today, it doesn't provide uh, information uh, about the recent past. I think um, it only searches or indexes information from. 2020 uh, till 2021. So there you go, as you will see on the screen, it says, I'm sorry, but I'm not able to browse the internet and therefore do not have information about recent events. So as you'll see, it's not browsing the event, so that's, uh, sorry, the internet. And that's one of the drawbacks uh, because what it provides to you is static information, it's not dynamic. So, and that's where, you know, earlier on I said when people are saying, well, this is going to kill Google. I doubt that will happen, at least in the near future. That won't happen. Finally, let's try to see if it can write in Hindi. So I'm asking it to write in Hindi that I enjoy reading the Australia Today. So let's see what it does. Now, waiting for it to respond. Uh, and we we'll wait for its response, but you know, um, I think this platform has has blurred the lines between man and machine. So you'll see here it says, "Me Australia today ko parne me anand leta hu." So there is your translation. If I'm not happy, I can ask it to write again. Uh, the tool obviously has its downside, such as lack of real time information. Um, false uh, information or misinformation, and it, there's also a potential for misuse. However, on a personal front, I think this is a very exciting development um, to watch out for, um, and I'm going to be watching out for this development both in wonder and worry because of the potential that it has 
um, to work both ways. So thank you for watching and please leave comments, provide comments to the Australia Today and take care everyone.